Yate, she ages Tina Slim, Munish Yet, Tua Hidlini Nishla, Tutlani Bishish Teen, Sinajini Dasha Che, Kia Ani Dashin, Dashinala, Ankut Ego de Nishla. Hey, over here, baby, just hold on. You're all right. Pay attention to where you're going. I was really fortunate to have been brought up in this type of environment and I've been grateful ever since I came back from school. My daddy let me go buy some cows myself. That's something that's really important to me as far as like the longevity and carrying on tradition and just really keeping like the cowboy story alive. Future cowboys right here, they're getting started riding out of chop wood and feed animals, haul water, take out the trash. A little bit too on, Rudo. I think a lot of us are really proud that to see all of my nephews, because I have four nephews now, and they love it coming out here. Just go up that road. Just go up that way. Just go that way. Wade gathered with us today on his new little pony. We got that just last weekend. And it just really tickles me that they're growing up and they really enjoy this environment. There you go, just go that way. Because I love it. I, When I have my own kids, I want them to grow up in this and know nothing but this, really. My dad, he's a product of boarding school. And my uncle, they all went to boarding school and they'll tell me stories of like, when they went to boarding school, they couldn't speak Navajo. And like every summer they went back to school, they got their hair cut off. And so that was part of just like, part of them like kind of diminishing our language, you know? I think it's really interesting because like, we were part of World War II, like our language was, and that's where the co-talkers come from. This, you, what you do is grind it and then from there you put it back in the husk and then you put it in the oven and then it bakes probably for an hour and then you have your nail down gravy. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that. Yeah. And sedako, that's how they, what they call it in Navajo, and sedako means nail down bread. I think it got its name from when they used to grind these corn like this to have those big like stones and then they Grind it down and people are, when they're kneeling down and doing that. I got it. Okay, hold on, Jesse, stop. Okay. So this is blue cornmeal and this is juniper ash. Oh, uh, flip them over. Brings us together, you know, if anything, you know, have a good meal and give everybody a little bit of meat. Send them home with it. Pretty good. On the what? In the kid table. This is the big, big kid table. Carson. Yeah, we're big kids. Carson, come here. I know a lot of kids, like when they first like move off the reservation and go to school, that is something that they really struggle with. Leaving the res is pretty, pretty scary. Or at least because like we're so, like we get really comfortable here and 
around a lot of our relatives and then you leave home and you're like, well, I'm in this big, big city where I know nobody. Um, but I was grateful that my transition to CSU was really easy. out there you beat the odds you worked through a system that was not built for you you know higher education um, was meant to be this thing to provide access and equality for folks and sometimes especially for native and indigenous students it does not do that and it works against you but you all came together you worked hard you found your people and now you're here and you're creating pathways behind you for more native students to graduate and that is unbelievable and we're so proud of you and we're so happy for all of your accomplishments. Even when I went to CSU, there was a lot of Navajo kids there and there was a girl I met there and she had the same first clan as me and I had never met her. And so, so technically she's like my sister. Um, and so that's just kind of how like you can create bonds with people that are like, even when you're far away from home and you can feel like a little bit close to home. Welcome to the 76th Annual Navajo Nation Fair. Today's our Junior Livestock Show Day. Big, big day. All of the youth from the surrounding communities within the Navajo Nation bring their projects, their animals they've been working with all year long. They bring them right here to the Navajo Nation Fair. We judge them, we place them, and tomorrow the big sale day. So I currently work for Diné College. They're a tribal college here on the Navajo Nation. Well, and a lot of folks think puberty is based on age, but it's based on weight. So I am a livestock specialist. I really strive to educate Navajo ranchers to new things that are going on. So, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we begin our day. <laughs> Diné College and University of Arizona. We partner on the 4-H show. And so what we really do is we aim to put the show on for 4-H clubs in Big Navajo. I think it just tickles me so much to see all these kids so passionate about working their animals um, because they are the future of agriculture and the future of agriculture on Big Navajo. Five dollar bid, I'll bet a water bet a five. I'll bet a water bet a five. I'll bet a water bet a number of water bet a five dollar bid. Five dollars, I'm gonna water bet a four and a half, four and a half, I'm gonna water bet a four, I'm gonna water bet a four fifty, four fifty, I'm gonna water bet a don't bet it on number water bet a four, four fifty, now I'm gonna water bet a five. Money down, four fifty, now five, but we're better 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 five. We got a break. All sad part is selling your animals that you most love. Yeah, but that's important too, you know, because once you sell your animals, they go in the food chain and they feed people. And you eat too, so that's really important. I'm about to order about a haul in all done. Eight and a quarter. Eight and a quarter. Sold them your way right there. Eight dollars. These kids are getting the learning and not just showing. And that's right. what I really emphasize. Like, if you're going to do a steer project, you have a nice steer, but I want to know what you feed it, yeah. why you feed it. Do you weigh it? What's your reasonings behind this? Yeah. And Tell so, me about your structure and your. Mm -hmm. give me your reasons. Give me your reasons of why you like your own steer. I think that's really exciting, especially, but also I think for producers or just even regular consumers, like Navajo consumers, I think it's really important for them to see, you know, like I, I, I made this, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I raised this and I, <clears throat> I've watched it grow up and then I can put it in a feedlot, which is on Navajo land. We're sorting out the mama cows. These cows, they stay here. And the babies are being hauled off. So 
that's what we're doing. We're short cattle. And the bulls, we're going to haul the bulls out as well because they're, they should be done breeding. There you go. Good job, good job, good job. Still waiting for my first, uh, be taking the lunch with her new paycheck, but she's doing well. Did good for herself. But she, uh, she likes what she's doing right now. We have a grant that I'm working under right now that will be to establish the first meat processing facility on Navajo Nation. So this is something that I can give back to my community. Come on, baby. Thank you.